What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Jay Stein, the one and only, coming at you with the post-market wrap-up edition of the, uh, the, the stream or blog or whatever you want to call uh, this thing that I do. All right, so uh, pretty much what I thought was going to happen happened. Uh, for those of you who did hop on uh, GTT, I hope you played it right. It didn't quite do what I wanted it to do, but still pull a nice little profit off of it. Not bad for a little day trade. Um, pretty cool. So whatever. Um, you know, was it a 20% run? No, no, but I'll still take, I'll still take what I took. Anyways, um, I'm actually not going to post. Now, I am going to look for some pure plays uh, going into tomorrow, but I'm more than likely going to be very hesitant to purchase anything, and here's why. The last time they made a Fed decision or, you know, Jerome Powell uh, came out and said something, the market tanked, and then the very next day it came right back up. So my concern is that what he said today, which we'll get into in a minute, made the market go up and the yields go down and the dollar go down and so on. Um, I'm concerned that tomorrow, after all this information is digested uh, by the markets and the big banks and so on, um, that they could sell off and take their profits and, 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 and hold them uh, for whatever, divest them or however you want to say it. So again, I'm going to be very cautious going into tomorrow. So um, what... Uh, Freaking Jerome Powell said, I don't want to be redundant. It's what I've been saying since yesterday. Um, he basically, yeah, um, they're going to continue buying assets. Uh, he said inflation is going to pretty much maintain. Uh, they're not going to do anything to the, what's it called, their rates. Um, yeah, and uh, basically going to weaken the dollar continually uh, to maintain the market. So what that did was um, it did drop the rates, it dropped the dollar, and it caused the markets to hit new highs, which is all euphoric and everybody's all hunky-dory about it. Um, and they're talking about doing this stuff till like 2023. And somebody that I follow who I consider to be a mentor and I agree with 100%. He's not lying. They're not going to stop at 2023. They've been saying they were going to stop doing these types of, uh, you know, uh, quantitative easing, uh, if you want to just use that term. That was supposed to be done like in 2010. No, they're not going to stop. This is the system. The Fed controls everything. The lender and the buyer of last resort. And guess what? They tax you on the front. They tax you on the back. How do you pay for the tax? They print you more money. People, pay it. attention. This is how the system works. This is the real world. The Federal Reserve runs the world. Anyways, um, the one thing he did definitely avoid and I know why he did it. Um, one of the reporters from some news news source that I don't pay attention to, she was some no-name blogger. <laughs> not that I can say any better. I'm not, I barely have 100 subscribers, which thank you all, by the way. Um, anyways, so she asked about Operation Twist and whether that was something that they were going to be uh, interested in doing. And if you notice... Jay Powell jumped off of that topic extremely quick because had he gone into that, he would have then had to go into uh, yield curve control, which is irrelevant because all they're going to do in order to control that yield, because look, they, they need to keep the yield, the 10-year yield under 2%. If it goes above that, they have a problem. In my opinion, really, if it goes up 1.8, we got problems, but they're just going to keep printing the money. And that's just it. That's how they are going to implement their yield curve control. So with that, um, that pretty much sums up uh, the day. Uh, markets all shot up. Um, hopefully everybody made money. Um, two other things real quick. Um, I meant to do a video on this. Uh, I am a Bitcoin stacker. Um, I was just busy 
and I didn't have a chance to shoot a video, but Morgan Stanley uh, is now buying Bitcoin or allowing its uh, investors to buy Bitcoin, but only its big investors. So they're whales. Multi-million dollar investors are now allowed to buy Bitcoin. So um, that kind of helps uh, take the opposite end of my concern of regulation when it comes to crypto. Um, and then the other thing, uh, somebody asked me about AMC and um, it's basically, look, I've made money on it. Well, I lost money on it. Then I made money back and then I doubled my money off of it and uh, whatever. But here's the thing. Um, yeah, after hours, it spiked out and I'm just like, oh man, like I should have bought it, but whatever. But here's the deal. It sits, it's sitting like right on a support level and if it fails it, it's going to tank big time. And here's the deal with these uh, GameStop, AMC type deals is people buy them simply because people buy them. There's no real fundamental reason people are buying them. Now, AMC, I will give an exception to. They are offering an, an experience um, through, their, through their theaters and what they're bringing, the new services and the new experiences that they're bringing. However, I think this virus is still going to hamper... Uh, their ability to generate revenue to the to the point where this valuation matters or matches I should say so um, for me the GameStop the AMC those types of deals they're tempting they're so tempting and, and sometimes I play them and yeah you know like I said I lost money and then I made it back and then doubled it and then I said no more never again and yet I'm looking at the chart and I'm mad that I didn't buy it again. So um, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Tell your friends all about it. And have a great rest of the day, man. I'll check you guys uh, if anything comes up later today. If not, tomorrow, manana.